Hi, this is Stacia, and um, I wanted to share a game that I played on chess.com uh, today against Santa Claus. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, his name was Santo S. Santoas. S A N T O A S. So, you know, that's pretty close to Santa Claus. And, uh, but he did not give me a Christmas present this game. <laughs> But let's have a look, shall we? Um, E4 was the start, and um, I played the Scandinavian defense. And now after E takes D5, I've been trying a new variation of this called the modern Scandinavian, which is the move knight to F6. Um, the other line I like is queen takes D5, followed by knight C3, and I like the queen A5 Scandi. But here I play knight f6, and this is, um, takes you into some interesting waters. Um, the main reason I switched to this is I'm hoping for the move c4 so I can play e6. And this is called the Icelandic Gambit. So this would certainly be uh, something to do or something to enjoy. <laughs> okay, but knight f6, he played d4. This is actually... Um, the best move and now you can proceed with just taking this with the knight that's the main move um, but I actually decided that I wanted to get into sharper lines so I've decided on the move bishop g4 and this leads to the Portuguese variation and so I'm attacking the queen. So it's a little aggressive, I guess. Uh, I'm leaving the pawn there for now. And these are basically white's responses. Um, the main move is f3, just to kick the bishop to f5. But my opponent played um, bishop b5 check. This is pretty interesting because, as you can tell, c6 isn't really possible right now. So I played the main book move, which was knight bd7, and now f3 was played. So kicking the bishop. I remembered that the bishop goes to f5 here. I'm not entirely sure why or if it matters. Actually, I'll check with the engine real quick. That's a good question. Yeah, it looks like bishop f5 is quite a bit better than bishop h5. Let, let's see if we can understand why. Oh, you know what? I think I know why. I think the reason is because after bishop f5, you can still play the move e6, and if takes, you take with the bishop. Oops. So it would be like this and like this. So that's the reason for that. Um, and now my opponent played... Um, Pretty interesting move, the move g4. I have to say too, like he was playing really slow in the opening. This is a 15-10 standard game. And he was taking a lot of time in the opening. And I was actually worried for him that he would run out of time too fast. Um, but okay, bishop g6. And then knight c3 was played, a developing move. This also defends the pawn, so kind of annoying for me. Um, so I'm out of book here, definitely. Um, after g4, I was I was out of book. Um, I have to be careful because I think h4 is an idea for white, you know, with the idea of h5. But I thought if he played h4, I would go h5 myself. And that's like sort of a common thing. So like, let's say he did this. I can go h5 and after g5... Um, I can take here. This is this is probably good for black, just because I think white's a bit overextended on the king side. And lagging development, so. Okay. But knight c3, better move than to go for h4. And now I played the move a6.
So here I'm just looking to um, disturb the bishop. This pin is annoying, you know, because I, I can't play c6. So this is definitely annoying. So I decided I would do this sort of thing just to break the pin and then take the pawn. So after um, so knight b6 was my idea to take, notice that it unleashed the queen on it as well. So I've got three attackers. That is sufficient. He played queen e2. So, and I like this move for him. It actually pins my e pawn. That's kind of important to keep in mind. And prepares castle's queen side. And okay. Um, here, I just go ahead and take it. Now it turns out that there's a way better way to play here. Um, and the reason is, I didn't notice this, but he could actually take, and after takes, um, he could play the move f4. And this is very strong. So this idea does a lot of things, you know. Um, one of the first things it does is it eliminates this weakness on f3. That was a backwards pawn. It is no longer backwards. And f4 comes with the threat of f5. So that would trap the bishop. And not only that, but, I mean, even if I play, like, let's say I play h5. And he goes f5. Well, after bishop h7, guess what? It's still hard for me to play e6. So the computer really likes white here, and I agree. So I didn't see this idea of f4, f5, but that is something that I made a flashcard on. Because <laughs> that, I don't want to allow that in the future. So, okay. Um, so to review, taking this is actually not good because it allows this move f4 after I take back. Um, and for that reason, I actually have a better move here. And the move is b4 first with the idea of just misplacing the knight. He can come here and I can't really take because I'll be check. But um, then follow it up with h5. And this is the computer's top line. And I do like it. I see some value in this. I think um, when I look at pawn breaks, I like to analyze what if they take, what if they push past, and what if they ignore it and do something else. Um, well, if they take, I could take with a rook. And now my rook is on this pawn and my rook is active. And I think that's just an improvement for me. Um, and if they push, yeah, even taking with the bishop might be okay. I'm not sure. Um, now I move my knight to capture the pawn. This is what I wanted to do anyway. And this is totally fine. Also, I think the main benefit here is that f4, f5 idea doesn't work as good now because now that the pawn has moved from g4, um, the f5 square doesn't have the support it needs. So there you go, getting deep into the middle game plans. Um, okay, let's continue. So instead of f4, my opponent played a4. Very interesting idea. Um, a top computer move um, also. And his point is that if I take, he takes a check. So that doesn't look appealing. And if I allow him to take, um, like let's say I just do something random. Like, um, yeah, let's say just randomly just h6, just to kind of show you. If he takes, I can't really take back because he can take with check, and I'm going to get checkmated. <laughs> um, the only reasonable thing to do here is block with the queen, but that undefends the rook, and this is checkmate. <laughs> so yikes, that kind of comes out of nowhere. I heard these lines were sharp, and well, that's kind of sharp. So the move a4 has some, some real poison in it. 
um, or venom in it, as they would say. <laughs> Did they say that? All right, so I play E6. So I saw that line, and now my idea was to answer pawn takes with bishop b5 check, or bishop b4 check, rather. Okay, so he does take, and I play this move. Computer actually likes a5. Oh no, it's changing its mind. It likes bishop b4 check. <laughs> okay. And here, um, the problem with this is that I kind of underestimated his potential responses. I basically saw that after um, after c3, I was going to be much better. I can play takes, and he can't really take back because I played check, and this is just horrible. I win the rook here. Um, and I also thought bishop d2 is also not so good because here I can actually... Um, Well, actually, I'm not sure. I thought I could take here. Or not take. I mean, check here. And if he blocked with the queen, there's this problem. But it turns out that white can actually just kind of move their king and give up their castling rights, and it's actually totally fine. So in this game, he goes king of one. And... Here I go a5, and now knight h3. All right, so I um, I figure, well, maybe it's time to castle, because I was thinking about going queen h4, attacking the knight. Um, but if I do this, I think that just straight loses. You can just take here. <laughs> so that's not good. Um, there's other moves too, computer showing, like um, King G2 is a move, just defend the knight. And then my queen's just misplaced, I have to come back to defend the knight. So, okay. So I castle, I don't want this pawn pinned anymore. Or I'm sorry, I don't, yeah, I don't want the pawn pinned because I need my knight defended by the pawn. And he goes King G2. Excellent move. The king's actually kind of safe here. And now the rook is ready to come out. And here, I really was giving um, some thought as to what I should do. Um, I consider the move h5, which it is the top computer move. And I didn't consider the move a4, which is a top computer move. So those are interesting. Um, instead, I went for rook c8. This is like the fourth, or rook e8. This is basically like the fourth move, but it's not very accurate. And in fact, I would call this a pretty good inaccuracy due to the move c4. And this is a pawn move with tempo, and it prepares d5. And I think if white gets d5 in, then black's just in trouble. So, um, so yeah, black's probably already in trouble here. And this is what my opponent played. So, in light of that, if we go back to the move king g2, if I had gone h5 and then c4, I could play knight b6. He could go rook d1, which this is kind of what happened in the game. But now I can play, like, h takes g4. And this move a4, inconveniencing the bishop, and queen h4. And this position is a little bit better. And I think it's because the, the white king is not quite as safe due to the pawn on f3 being traded off. And like f4, f5 ideas are gone. And Yeah, I mean, this is kind of difficult for me to analyze, but um, this is playable. I'd still say white's better, though. Yeah, white must be better. Okay, so king g2, rook e8, and c4. Very good move. I go to knight 
V6. It's kind of scary, but I was thinking if C5, I'll just hop right back in. That was kind of my idea there. And I continue to at least watch the square from here. But now rook d1, so definitely preparing d5. Lined up with my queen. Very disturbing. And, well, <laughs> I'm sad to say that I gave Santa Claus a Christmas present here. Because I had less than a minute left. I know you guys hate it when I'm in time pressure. Sorry. <laughs> um, and you know how I said he was playing really slow in the beginning? Well, my opponent really um, played amazing after the opening. He played very fast in comparison and played all the top computer moves. Very suspicious. <laughs> so I don't know what to say about that. Um, but I also kind of like it because maybe I took a loss in this game, but I enjoy looking at the best continuations and the biggest threats in the position. Um, Definitely good for learning chess, which is my main priority. So here I quickly went with the move queen f6. But do you see the losing? Do you see why this is losing? Yeah, and I was kind of sad to see that after bishop g5, my queen is trapped. <laughs> so that was my Christmas present to Santa Claus. Um, I'm hoping in return he gives me uh, better gifts on Christmas Day, on Christmas morning. <laughs> um, maybe like a nice mate in one or something like that. So maybe I'll challenge him to a game later after he's done delivering the, the presents. Um, yeah, so from here I'm just lost. I mean, I, I was down on time. I played a little bit, but I just sacked the queen. And I mean, there's this is just totally lost, so... Uh, but yeah, congrats to my opponent on finding all the best moves. <laughs> and um, yeah, just thank you if you watched my analysis. I thought this was a very instructive game. I'm really liking the Portuguese. And I'm going to go through some key moments. Uh, just I think it's, it's good to do this. So in the Portuguese, bishop g4. Um, this bishop e5 check line is very interesting. The bishop goes to f5 because we want to support e6. And this is totally okay if they play g4. If h4, we go h5. And here, a6 is actually totally fine. Yeah, and the idea here is that I shouldn't even go knight b6 because of f4. So f4 is a threat, and that's why I should go b4 here followed by h5 is the best plan, but I do this, allowing the move, yeah, this a4 move, very interesting, like huge threats with the checkmate. But I liked this little idea aside from I didn't realize king f1 was strong. <laughs> okay, castle, that was correct. King g2, excellent move. And again, this h5 move. Rook e8, inaccurate. Due to c4. And this blunder here so yeah i think i learned some key pawn breaks white has in this structure so i have to watch out for f4 and c4 a lot better than i did and um yeah don't fall for getting your queen trapped right <laughs> always good advice so um thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this and have a good one